hope everything went well with last week's lessons. We looked at the different types of cables, we looked at wired and wireless, and LAN and WAN and MAN and personal area networks and so forth. Today we're going to be looking at the hardware that is used to support the local area network and then we're going to delve a bit more deeper into how things work and how the whole infrastructure about the internet is all set up. So let's begin. Most of this is going to be a recap, especially what we're going to be covering today. However, there are going to be a few things that are relevant for a S level, which are quite different from IGCSE. The first device we're going to be looking at is the hub. Now you're going to be familiar with this particular device from IGCSE. A hub is just a hardware device that connects a lot of different types of devices together. It can be both wired or wireless. The biggest problem that a hub has is it's not very intelligent. So when it receives a data packet, it just simply transmits it to everyone that's connected to it. Now this can lead to significant security issues. Of course, the data packets that perhaps you want for your computer, you don't want them going to any other computer, but that's not the case with a hub. Also, it can lead to bandwidth wastage. For example, on a network, if you've got, say, 300 megabits per second traffic going on and you've got a big file being downloaded, all those data packets are going to be floating around 8 or 12 or 16 or whatever number of devices that are connected to a hub and taking up space as well. So just be aware that these devices are cheap, these devices are fit for one particular purpose that's connecting devices together. They're not very intelligent. And if you're talking about intelligent devices, the alternative is the switch. Now these are devices again just like a hub that connects a lot of different devices together and they can also be wired or wireless. But the biggest difference is that a switch will always check the received data packets and it sends it to the correct destination address and for that to happen it uses MAC addresses to uniquely identify each device. So normally what happens is there's a table which is stored by the switch where you have a list of MAC addresses and where they're connected and when a data packet is received it checks against that list and then sends its on its way. So of course these devices are a bit more expensive due to that theoretical intelligence however all you're looking at here is a table so quite commonly used in server-based networks where a lot of devices need to be connected to each other. Now you probably had this issue at your home Perhaps there are dead zones, especially with your Wi-Fi, that there are areas where you can't get signal. And signals are basically waves and they use basic physical properties. They have to travel through a medium. And the medium could be air, it could be an electrical cable. So over time, this signal degrades and you lose something called attenuation, signal strength. Repeaters are devices that need to be used to boost the signal and amplify it on both fiber and copper and they can also be used on wireless systems eliminating dead zones so you have your router in one particular place and you then put a repeater somewhere near the edge of the range of the router which takes the original signal and then boosts it a bit further now these are called non-logical devices which means that they're not very selective and they boost all signals. So it's not like that, okay, there's a specific signal that needs boosting and the other ones aren't. They just take whatever comes their direction and they boost it across. The security and delivery path management can't be controlled because they're repeating information, so they just pass it on. So it doesn't matter that you, you, know, you might have somebody else receiving that signal in the neighborhood. They don't frankly have the intelligence to deal with it. And as a result of this, that collisions are often very difficult to resolve, especially when you've got signals coming from all sorts of directions. Now, bridge is another device that's quite commonly used in a network. And these devices connect one local area network to another. Often, those networks which use the same language or the same protocol, they can obviously be both wired or wireless. They can also be used to connect parts of the same local area network as well. So you don't suddenly need another device outside the network. It might be that you have two rooms which are controlled by switches and then between both rooms you've got a bridge that allows both of those rooms to communicate with each other. And if you walk around school you'll probably see these somewhere other connecting to other switches which are part of the network. Now they can prevent flooding of the network by data packets which might travel to all possible destinations 
For example, you might have a server that's sending data to a particular computer, but because that server might be connected to all these switches, it sends data to 10 switches or something that are connected to it. And the switches are intelligent enough to deal with it, but if you've got hubs, then everything goes to everywhere. So sometimes bridges can act as a switch and they know exactly where every other switch is on the network and when data is received, they pass it on to the right switch which then passes on to the right computer. And of course you then have the most commonly used device, the router. A router is so popular that it's the backbone of the internet. Devices that connect different networks together are basically routers. So they are like bridges. Bridges obviously are connecting to similar local area networks like two LANs that use the same protocol. Router has the ability to act as a translator between different protocols. So it allows a LAN to connect to a WAN and uh, all sorts of different combinations are possible. What I don't mean is that you can have LAN and WAN which are using the same protocol. What I mean is these LANs or these WANs use different protocols and a router can act as that translator. They restrict broadcasts to a particular LAN itself and they act as a default gateway device. So that means that everything has to pass through them. They calculate the best route to a network address and through this intelligent rerouting, they can ensure that time isn't wasted and the data gets to the right destination as fast as possible. A gateway is an alternative to a router. This is basically a network point or a node that acts as an entrance to another network and routers often play this role as well. It's also used to connect to dissimilar LANs, so that means they don't use the same protocol, acts as a translator, converts data packets from one protocol to another. There's all sorts of things that the router does as well. And obviously can act as a router, firewall or server, can be both wired or wireless. So gateways and routers have similar functionality really, but gateway is just the entrance, whereas routing has that intelligent logic about rerouting data as fast as possible to the destination. Now another common device which perhaps isn't as popular now because the router probably contains the modem is the modular demodulator. In the old days what used to happen was that you used to connect to networks via public telephone lines and the modems used to allow conversion between analog and digital data because computers use digital data, the normal telephone lines use analog signals. So public communication networks normally used to use analog data and the modem was converting digital data into analog, sends it down this particular wire and on the other end there's another modem that takes this analog data and converts it to a digital uh, form that the other computer can hear and the process repeats again. So you might say it kind of acts like an ADC or analog to digital converter which, which basically it does. So routers allow creation of a network within the home whereas modem connects it to external networks. Both are combined these days. Software modems are also possible these days which use processor and RAM to replace the modem hardware. So it, they don't necessarily all need to be hardware. That's why routers and modems are normally combined and the modem might be the software component of a router as well. Now an important comparison is that between routers and gateways. So you need to be aware of what each one does and what each is role is. So pause the video and perhaps go through this comparison carefully. Routers forward packets of data from one network to another. Routers read each incoming packet of data and decide where to forward the packet to. They can route traffic from one network to another. They can be used to join LANs together to form a WAN. They can also connect a number of LANs to the internet. They offer additional features such as dynamic routing, ability to forward data by different routes. That's the intelligent logic we were talking about earlier. Gateways convert one protocol of which is the data formats to another protocol used use in a different network. They convert data packets from one protocol to another. They act as an entry and exit point to networks. So a lot of translation happens from one protocol to another in a gateway. They do not support any dynamic routing, which is one of the major differences between both. Now this is again from IGCSE. You know this really, really well. The network interface card. This allows connection of a device to the network itself. So think about it this way that I've set up my network, I've got my switches, I've got my bridges, I've got my routers and gateways and modems and all of that kind of stuff. Cables are there, everything's ready, but how do you connect it to the device? Well, the network interface card comes to play. It's part of the hardware and contains the MAC address generated during the manufacturing stage of the device. 
It can also come in the form of a wireless NIC and that uses an antenna to connect to a network, normally via microwaves. It plugs into your USB port or the, the motherboard itself, has two different modes. One is called infrastructure mode, which needs a wireless access point, and the other one is ad hoc, which allows it to directly connect to a device with no access point needed as well. So the infrastructure mode is what you're using when you're connecting to the school, and the ad hoc could be something like connecting two devices together or using Bluetooth equivalent as well. Now, Ethernet is the backbone if you think about local networks. It's a protocol. Do not get it confused by the Ethernet cable. That's something different. Ethernet on its own is a protocol and it's used by wired local area networks. And it's a worldwide standard, also known as IEEE 802.3, which is the Institute of Electronics and Electrical Engineers and so forth. Now it requires a node, which is a computing device, a medium, which is a path, which probably uses an Ethernet cable, for example, and a frame. And a frame has the data, which is transmitted, along with the destination and sender's MAC addresses. So when you want to send a file, it's broken into data packets, and these packets are put into a frame, which has the destination and sender's MAC address, and then it's transmitted down that cable, which is the Ethernet cable, which you can probably see on that screen. And the protocol it's using is Ethernet. Whilst using Ethernet, it's possible to have an IP address conflict. For example, that means two computers are normally given the same IP address. And it mostly occurs when we use something called dynamic IP addresses, which are temporary and change, and they might end up being similar to other ones, which are called static IP addresses. Now, these are fixed IP addresses, which are given to a particular node on the network. So normally you go about fixing it by restarting the router, which ensures that the dynamic IP addresses are reassigned, so hopefully there is no conflict. Now we'll look at some algorithms that help in this process in due course, but by now you should know the difference between a router and a gateway. You should know what a modem is and what it does, what's the purpose of a repeater, and what are the three important things that make up an Ethernet protocol, okay? So as long as you're comfortable with that, we're okay to move on to bit streaming in our next lesson. And of course, make sure that you're updating your notes as well. I will see you in the next lesson.